Hey everyone, in this video I'll be sharing you my diverse Pokemon collection that I started collecting earlier this year. There's a lot of different cards from a lot of different sets and I'll also be discussing how to kind of get into collecting, what I've learned, what I haven't uh, learned, the experiences I've made and specifically how you can figure out what type of cards you like collecting. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's just get into it. This is going to be really fun. I'll also be, you know, touching a little bit on my uh, my uh, experiences with Pokemon card investing and so forth. But mostly is this is just me uh, discussing my collection. So this card is a sealed and then uh, top loaded Tag Team GX Moltres Zapdos Articuno stained glass uh, card. And the first tip I really have for you if you're starting out your Pokemon card collection is to pick out items that you think you would like and then hold them and experience them and see if you like them. Through this method, I found out through you know, buying a lot of different sets, modern and vintage, that some things I thought I would like and then it turns out I don't really like them. For example, I realized I like the mint condition of a card much more than I thought. I thought I'd be okay with getting uh, cards that were, you know, uh, really moderately played or lightly played and uh, when I would admire them uh, I was just, just wouldn't feel as good about them so I, f I realized that I, I prefer cards that are more pristine now more pristine cards are rarer and harder to find so uh, that's something and they're more expensive but one could argue they appreciate in value more that could be wrong because now we're seeing cards that score 7 out of 10, 6 out of 10 on grading services in terms of condition, uh, they're also appreciating a lot in value. But, uh, you know, we're also in a big uh, Pokemon card interest boom, so that might be part of it. Uh, these are cards I'll be sending off to PSA to get graded. The first one is a almost pristine condition Charizard from the Expedition set. I believe this is like the ninth ever set released. It's kind of far down on the list of uh, vintage Pokemon cards, but I think it's a very much overlooked set because uh, there's low populations of everything. This is just a common, it's not a hollow, but um, given my budget, uh, this is probably as close to a mint condition card that I can afford. It's not perfect though. You know, if you look on the back, there's slight white on uh, a couple of the corners. Um, I also recently discovered that I really like Japanese cards. So these are budget cards that I got, um, I think for around five bucks each. These are almost pristine uh, Japanese base set cards, first ever print set, even before the English set. So this, this is like the first ever set, and that's why I like them a lot. A lot of people don't like Japanese, but I do. Um, because of that, you know, this is the first ever print run, first ever back, you know, the Japanese version of the back, and they're not perfect, you know, given my budget, and I had to do a lot of research and hunting to find these in these condition. Usually, they're kind of crappy condition. Um, if you look closely, like the centering is off on both of them, uh, it's very pronounced on the back, so they're not gonna get uh, ten out of tens. Uh, but I'm hoping I can still get a 8. That would be nice. Here's a Dark Charizard. One of maybe the first cards I ever purchased earlier this year. Um, it's the, I believe it's the second ever Charizard Hollow that Pokemon has printed in the English set. First was Base Set. And then after Base Set, you have Jungle Fossil and then Rocket. And so this is the second version of a Charizard other than the Base Set. So I think it's pretty iconic. Now, this is the Unlimited, so it really is pretty abundant. Um, there's a lot of these out there in the world, but still, I love it. Um, I want to uh, get it graded. I was lucky enough to get a one that's in decent condition with pretty good centering. It's not perfect. It definitely isn't perfect, but it's probably one of the best condition cards I have. Once you see the rest of my set, a lot of the cards are just not in good condition, but it's what I can afford. Um, this is a Blastoise Hollow from the base set Unlimited set. Similar thing, um, 
not perfect. Uh, it's pretty darn good, but there's some whitening on the back here. The centering is a bit off. It's it's fatter on the left side. Uh, if you guys don't know what centering is, it's basically like when they stamp the card, the borders have to be even um, on the front and back. And uh, it's not perfect. And I think that's that's one thing I think a lot of beginners make the mistake of. They think they grade their cards a lot higher than they, the grading companies will. They underestimate how strict grading is. Like you'll see a lot of people especially newer people list their offerings as, oh, this is going to be PSA 9, PSA 8, PSA 10. In reality, it's probably like a, a 7 or 6. Okay, so let's move on to some of the uh, some of the other cards I have for you. I'm not going to share my whole collection because that would take a while. But as you can tell, I like these affordable common cards that I, you can get for... Ten dollars or less. This is just a Jungle Snorlax um, from the Jungle set. It, I, this is a second ever set uh, released, and I preferred the uh, Hollow, but I didn't realize that until I got this one. I thought you know I could do without the Hollow, but then when I bought it, I was like, oh wow, the common one kind of looks a little lackluster. Here's another Charizard. This one is. Pretty much the same as the other one but it's a lot worse quality uh, here is a reverse hollow Charizard poor quality as well but it is still a very low population card like a lot of these Charizards in these sets there's only like less than a couple hundred in the world that have been graded and in terms of tens and nines there's single or double digit uh, I would say mostly double digit. There's no single digit. Uh, so this one looks really cool. I like how the... Uh, I love reverse hollows because it's the uh, text here that, that glows. And I, I kind of like that. Um, Ancient Mew. This was a sentimental card for me. Uh, if you can get this scored as a 10 out of 10, they sell for a lot, 150. But that whole game of grading... Uh, and gauging it is very risky. Um, I bought this for sentimental reasons because, you know, I love the first Pokemon movie. I remember going to the theaters to watch it. And they gave out this card. Um, this is not a 10 or even a 9. The centering is off. Uh, a casual beginner might not notice, but it, it's not going to get a 10, maybe not even a 9. And that's a risk. if Because you can, you know, you buy this for 20 bucks. 30 bucks and then you pay the $15 for grading that's already you know almost 50 bucks there 45 bucks and a PSA 8 or 9 only sells from 50 to 80 bucks so all that work and you may not be profiting and if you come back a 7 or 6 you can go negative this is actually a card I really like it is the uh, Legends Groudon there's a Kyogre on top and then a Groudon and then you combine the cards for a really cool work of art. Um, when I was purchasing these, they were so f scarce on the market. I, I couldn't even find them. Um, and if you did, you had to pay a premium. Now, uh, for some reason, I guess people have been digging them out of their basement. There's a lot more on the market, which is unfortunate. I wish I would have waited. Um, the story behind it is I purchased the top and bottom from different sellers. The top never arrived because the seller just went AFK. Like he listed the item a while ago and I guess he forgot to ever check Mercari again. So I ended up having to get a refund on that and I'm still seeking the top one. I could get it, but um, I actually bought a more pristine set, a Japanese version that's much more higher quality. So I'm probably going to uh, get rid of this one because if you look... The condition is pretty bad. There's a lot of whitening, a lot of whitening on it. Um, and I already have a, another set. Lapras Hollow. This is one of the cards where, um, you know, as I mentioned, a big tip is try out different cards. See what you like, what you don't. And I thought one of the cards I really would love is a Lapras Hollow. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. 
and it's iconic. You use it to surf in the games, travel, and um, when I finally got one, I realized, man, I really only want one with good condition. I mean, I still will keep this card, but I would love one so much more if it didn't have so much whitening on the back. Um, unfortunately, those will run you up. This one I got for about 10, 15 bucks. A pristine one, if you're lucky enough to find it on the market, it's gonna cost 50 bucks. Kangaskhan, I got this for a steal uh, early on uh, this year. And uh, it's, it's, it's something I'll keep. I mean, I love any base set uh, or uh, jungle set hollow. It's one of the original sets, so it's vintage. Um, I think this, you know, I got this in a bundle with the Charizard and Mewtwo for 170. Charizard and a Mewtwo, um, those are already worth around 300. So, so those appreciated a bit. And so this one I um, pretty much almost got for free. And I just love the design of it. Um, uh, it's a card I'll keep. I, I prefer more of the iconic hollows, but I also like any uh, vintage hollows. Another sentimental card from the movie promo. Um, I actually went, when I went to a movie, they were out of cards for whatever reason. So I never got one when I went to the movie. So I'm keeping this for sentimental reasons. It's a similar thing. If you could get a 10 out of this graded, it sells for a lot, but um, that's not a 10 by any means. Rocket Snorlax. I love Snorlaxes and um, I really care about the art for different Snorlaxes. And personally, you know, they've printed 30, 40 variations of Snorlax. This is one of my favorites. It's very affordable. You could get this for like five bucks or less, maybe two or three bucks. And uh, I guess I wanted one with good condition, but when you see it in the pictures and when it finally comes in the mail, it's not as good. So, um, I mean, it's not bad, but there's a there's clear whitening on the on at least three of the corners. So this is something uh, I just love the art. I like the way he lies down. And it was frankly just me like looking at all the different artworks for Snorlaxes over the years and just picking out the top three and buying them. I just like the art. Here's another stained glass um, tag team. Um, I really like the artwork on this. Um, this is also not a 10 or a nine based off the centering. Um, but I really like the artwork. Um, with modern sets, it's more unpredictable. There's there's less uh, guarantee that they will appreciate in value. Um, but I did uh, take a chance on that. I, I wanted to keep it even if it didn't appreciate in value. And I figured, you know, worst case situation, I don't think it would decrease in value. Um, if anyone have, has any insights on where I can get more data on stuff like that, because I'm not really too informed. I hear Bulbapedia is a good resource, but I don't really know much about that. And I would like to know more. So I'm, uh, I'm gambling less and more making an educated guess when buying cards, because I, I would, I don't want this to depreciate in value. Um, as I mentioned in my previous YouTube videos, um, uh, it's not just about investment for me. It's, it's also about collecting, but in terms of investing, sure, like I, I want to make educated purchases so that they will appreciate more than the uh, S&P 500. Uh, on the flip side, though, um, I need to make research based guess. And that means like knowing stuff um, about whether they'll do a reprint on this. For this card, I don't think they'll do a reprint because it was a promo off a set. And so they don't intend to do reprints on promos. However, the set itself, Hidden Fates, has been reprinted already and is still going through a reprint. So that's a risk that um, I should be more educated on and know more about. But I figure, you know, it's such an iconic card, like it probably will go up. And I, I tend to stick to vintage over modern because I'm looking for more appreciation. And so uh, there's that as well. I think in general, um, what I love about Pokemon cards is that they do if you make wise decisions, a lot of the collectors have their sets, their collections, and, and they will appreciate much more than the stock market. Uh, 50%, 200%. Um, for me, I found it's not that easy. It's a lot of work in researching and choosing the right things. And currently with the market so hot, even when I looked at a lot of local sellers going on OfferUp, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, a lot of people 
know what their cards are selling for. Um, and even though other people online and other YouTube videos are like, oh, it's so easy. You go on Craigslist, you find this thing, and I found this for a fraction of the price, and I got a Shadowless Charizard for 30 bucks. I haven't found that. If anything, I found the opposite. People will overestimate what they're selling for by a lot. I had some guy trying to sell a uh, base set unlimited Charmander for 500 bucks. Like no one's gonna buy that. And I see that all the time. People just thinking that their cards are worth so much more than they are. So unfortunately, at least in my local marketplace, not much luck there. But I'm still looking and I still, still love the whole bargain and shopping stuff. I know a lot of people hate the whole investing thing because they think it's it's ruining the market but um as you can tell at least for me you know it's a lot of it's collecting as well um and it's a huge appreciation for the market and you just need to go to my tiktok i have one of the largest uh, pokemon go followings on tiktok just to see my love for the game um but yeah here's the next card this is one of my favorites um it's it, the, a video won't do it justice, but the reverse hollow effect on this is incredible. The artwork for this blast choice is one of my favorites out of the hundreds of variations of artwork. And it's an Expedition Watsy vintage set, so um, it's also very iconic and limited print run. They'll never reprint this again. This is the best I could do off my affordability. I wish I could get the standard hollow version. Um, and I wish I could get a cleaner one, but you can tell this is pretty raw, pretty uh, torn up here. White, white, white on the bottom. But the hollow, the blue is so beautiful here. And I love how they chose to do more of a kind of uh, realistic uh, Im reimagination of Blastoise. It's almost as if he's real and he's like submerged in the water with these giant cannons. But this is what I could afford. I think I paid around 70 bucks for it, but I really wanted it. Uh, one day, though, I would hope to kind of get a uh, graded version that's more pristine and hollow, not reverse hollow. But I, I still love it. I mean, I wouldn't mind a pristine reverse hollow version of that. Here's one of my favorite Dragon Knights of all time, the Satchel version. Again, very nostalgic from the movie. It was a movie promo. Condition, not so good. Uh, as you can tell, I'm making compromises here. And that's what you have to do when you have a limited budget. You have to make a choice. Do you want to buy one card with pristine condition and use up all your budget or maybe more and overextend? Or do you want to kind of go back? Uh, this is an iconic card. Charizard Hollow. Legit Hollow. Not one of those commons or reverse hollows. This is the Legit Hollow. So you can see the swirls here. There's some really good swirls here. There's like a star right there. Uh, swirls. People will buy specific Charizards because of the variation on swirls. Some prefer multiple swirls on it. This one, condition is horrible. This is why, really why I uh, was able to afford this right here on the bottom. I don't know if you could tell in the video, but it is torn up. It's like bent, creased. I don't know what this would grade for. I would guess not even a five or four. I know you're saying, oh, well, it looks kind of good from afar. But once again, people overestimate, underestimate how strict grading is. And I have studied pictures of PSA 6s, 7s, 8s. And they're in better condition than this. So unfortunately, you know, I would love to get this graded, but I, I chose not to because the condition just kind of sucks. Maybe I, I'm still debating getting one of these graded, but I, I just don't know. Um, it's going to come back really crappy. Um, and it's it's such a beautiful card. I mean, it's, it's very rare too. A Charizard Hollow in a 10 for this. It's it's uh, five figures, and it's uh, there's less than it's double digit population I believe, but that's a ten. When you go down to the nines and eights and sevens, there's there's hundreds of them, and so it's it's hard to find them. And then last but not least, I got this card uh, a week ago. It's a new pickup. It's a dark. Alakazam. I just love the Japanese stuff. I, I used to just do base set collecting, but 
now has, as prices have skyrocketed, my budget has kind of shifted to Japanese. It's also partially my own preference, but also partially a investment decision. I believe that other people are doing the same. And even if they aren't, I have found a love for Japanese because personally, I realized that they were the first ever print run. Even before the English version, they this is the first ever print run. And so, you know, because the game came out of Japan, these are as vintage as you can get. Now, this is actually the second set, uh, Team Rocket, uh, Dark Alakazam. So it's not really the first, first one. The, the Charmander I showed earlier is. But um, I'm surprised how cheap they are on the market. And, and the reason, there's uh, many reasons for that. Not just because there was less demand, but mostly because um, I think they were just much more abundant. And same with hollows. You're guaranteed a hollow from every set from the Japanese boosters, not so much from the English. So this one, I believe, is almost pristine, but the centering is clearly off and there's some white on the bottom. If it wasn't for that, I would have sent this off for grading maybe, but um, just to have. I, I love the graded cards and I like having those stacks of containers, but they're just too expensive, man. I, I can't afford that. And then last but not least, I have a second Rocket Snorlax. That's right. I didn't just buy one. I loved it so much, I bought a second one. This one, of course, is also horrible, horrible centering. Look how thin the border is on this side. Um, unfortunately, you know, with some of the listings, when you purchase them, they're just too tempting. You know, you know the, you know the scores are not going to be great, but you can't help but buy one because the price is good or you just love the art so much um i have a lot uh, more i could show you but it's the video is getting long so i'll save it for another time um you can see some of my graded cards already on my instagram i have some psa's some nine some eights some 8.5s uh, on psa but uh just to round it off i will end with this this is something that i bought on ebay and it really wasn't it wasn't as much an investment piece as it was a collector piece but it was kind of both as well um, I really like these three starters and I knew that out of the base set uh, the starters sell for a lot uh, as far as um, why I collected them from a collector standpoint I knew I would keep these and have them even if they dropped in value or they stayed the same. And at the time I bought these, I figured they would stay the same. Um, I really did. I, I thought that they would really not appreciate in value because this is from the unlimited set. See, see, the base set has three print runs, first edition and then shadowless and then unlimited where there's no, um, uh, where there's a shadow on the top, uh, in the on the right side of each card. And this is the most abundant print run. So there's so many of these out in the market. And I figured they would never go up in price. Um, at the time I bought these, they were um, super abundant. You could buy them for like five bucks a piece, two bucks a piece on eBay. And so I never got these as a kid. I mean, I could only afford energy cards. I remember right when I was a kid and the, the card game came out, I, I kept asking my mom, and then one day she finally relented. She brought me to a comic book store. My mom talked to the guy. I, I wasn't able to talk to him because I was too young. He pulled out a binder, and he said, these are the cards you can afford. And, like, most of them were energy cards. A couple were really common, crappy cards like Machop, Abra, which are still not worth much today. And long story short, I decided not to buy any of them because they were all kind of crappy cards. I wanted some of the more iconic cards and unfortunately I couldn't afford them. And so uh, now, now that I'm an adult, uh, I can buy these. And for some of those cards, the prices have appreciated. Um, if you can get a, well, a mint condition one, uh, I, if you get one that's crappy condition, the price is still kind of iffy. Like you can get an Abra Machop Unlimited for like 10 bucks, five bucks. But if you get one that's pristine condition, even for these, if you get a 10 of these, they're about 150 each. Um, 
And so uh, that's better, easier said than done. I mean, even these, and I got lucky with these. Um, at the time, they were kind of cheaper. Um, even the PSA 10s were like much cheaper. Uh, these are probably like PSA 8s or 7s. And I was surprised at the condition when I bought it. Um, the seller already had it framed, so I, I wanted something on my wall. I was actually going to put this on my wall until when I received it, he actually, I, he actually, I realized at the back, he added these energy cards to correspond, which is really nice. And so I figured it'd be a better kind of piece that you hold in your hand that I, I put on the table rather than something that I put on the wall because then you can't see the back. So long story short, this was a, simply a nice pickup for me to have and keep forever on my own. And I didn't expect it to appreciate, and I didn't expect the condition to be so good. Um, you might say, oh, these are 10s, right? They're pristine. No, if you look closely, there's a bit of whitening uh, on these and um, on these as well, if you look closely. But the centering is great. I mean, these are really good condition, and you'll, you'll be hard-pressed to find something like these on the market anymore. So I bought these earlier this year for 15 bucks. Now, I, if I had to guess... They're probably trading around 20, 30, uh, 30 bucks on the market each. Um, so they've gone up. And then if I got them graded, uh, they might appreciate a bit more to like 50 each. But then you have to subtract the cost of grading each. Um, so it's a nice little surprise there. But I don't really check the prices on those much. Um, I knew they were potentially an investment piece, but... Like, really, out of any other card in my collection, I really wanted them for myself. And I, I didn't expect them to ever go up. Um, and I'll probably be buying more because I just love how iconic these cards are. I wish I could get the first edition or even the Shadowless versions, but those are just beyond belief in price. Um, still, I, I'm very happy with this. They're really the same thing, honestly. Just because they have a stamp... Or they don't have that border um, it's not a big deal for me it's still a little deal because you know there's, there's always some nagging part of me that wants the higher version but there it is there's my collection hope you enjoyed this video subscribe and let me know what you want to see in the future